one of Iran's biggest mosques. The Imam Reza Shrine raised a black flag this week, outside of a traditional month for the first time in Iran's history. This is the Black Mahdi flag, the flag of their Islamic Messiah, the 12th Imam. It's the flag that their scriptures, the Hadith, say will be carried into Jerusalem in victory. Is this a sign that their Islamic Messiah is about to be revealed? If so, it's a sign that Iran is all in on this Middle East conflict we're in. And if so, it's a sign to us Christians that the 70th week of Daniel, where some call it the tribulation, is about to begin. Jesus warned us that false messiahs and false prophets would arise, and an Islamic messiah, the Mahdi, would certainly qualify. And it's also a sign that one of the central prophecies about the coming of the Antichrist is about to be fulfilled. This is Bible teacher Nelson Walters, and we have a lot to unpack in this episode. The appearance of a false messiah, perhaps one performing miracles under the influence of Satan, is a major sign of the end times, one all Christians should be watching for it intently. For false Christs and false prophets will arise and show great signs and wonders, so as to mislead, if possible, even the elect. Today, we're going to look at what the Shia Muslims believe about the Mahdi and the black flags and how this may affect how they are going to react in the near future. We're also going to look at what scriptures say about these things. Our scriptures, because our scriptures are inerrant. They're always right. And these scriptures are going to give us a picture, perhaps, of what is going to happen in the current Middle East conflict that's going on right now, and I know you really want to see that. But first, a shout out to our community member, Jason Lawrence, who helped us research this video. So what is it about this black flag? The black flag in Islamic tradition holds a dynamic significance that marks their end times. Here is what their hadith or scripture says about it. When the black flags come from Khorasan, which is a province in Iran, Central Asia, that kind of area, go to them, even if you have to crawl on snow among them, is the Caliph of Allah, the Mahdi. So the black flag is a sign to those in Shia Islam that the Mahdi or 12th Imam is about to be revealed. And they have a destination. Here is another hadith. Surely black flags will appear from the Khorasan until the people under the leadership of this flag, will tie their horses with the olive trees between the Batalea and the Harshta, which are the names of places in Jerusalem. So flying this flag is a sign to the Muslim world that their destination is the conquering of Jerusalem. In the current Middle East conflict, it's an encouragement to Iran's proxy governments in the Gaza Strip and Lebanon of what they're fighting for. These black flags are specific. They're black banners. They carry white lettering, which is their shahada, which in Arabic means the testimony. It's an Islamic oath and creed. Its meaning is on the screen. Those converting to Islam were going to say this. So this isn't a national flag, like an Iranian flag, those who carry this black mahad are carrying the flag of their Islamic Messiah, of their religion. So raising this flag is a sign to Iran's proxies to encourage them in what lies ahead for them in the Middle East. In Shia Islam, which is the branch of Islam that Iran follows, this takes a little bit different bent. This is what their Shahada says. And I'm intentionally not saying these words because I don't even want them coming out of my mouth. But notice, they've added another person to this, someone that the other branches of Islam don't favor, Ali. And this may lead to conflict between factions of Islam and more on this in just a little bit. Also notice, the first part of the Shahada, there is no deity but Allah, is very, very similar to what the Antichrist says, 
when he takes his seat in the temple of God. Paul wrote about this in 2 Thessalonians 2, 3 through 4, 600 years before Islam was founded. The man of lawlessness is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above every so-called God or object of worship. See, that's just like the Shahada. So that he takes his seat in the temple of God, displaying himself as being God. So someday, the Antichrist himself will say something very similar to the Shahada, except he's going to say that he's the one who's God. He himself is God. So who's this 12th Iman guy that the Muslims are waiting for? He is believed by the Twelver Shia, and they're the ones who are looking for him, to be the last of the 12 Imams and the eschatological Mahdi who will emerge in the end times to establish peace, justice, and restore what they believe is true Islam. The Shia in Islam believe this 12th Imam was an infant son of their 11th Imam back like in 200 AD and has been kept hidden from the public out of fear that he would be persecuted or maybe even killed. They also claim that he's in a state of occultation let me explain that. It means a miraculous prolonging of life while he's in hiding. But they believe he will reappear shortly before the day of judgment when, commanded by God, this guy, al Mahdi, will return to lead the forces of righteousness, their righteousness, against the forces of evil, their evil, in an apocalyptic war that would ultimately establish what the Twelvers believe is true Islam, which means what the Iranians are believing the Shia. There's another branch of Islam, the Sunni Muslims, you know, from Egypt, Turkey. They also believe in Ahmadi, but they differ with the Shia on his lineage, where he's from. They don't believe he'll be from the 11th Imam. So you can just imagine if a demonically possessed man emerges and claims to be the Mahdi and says he's either Shia or conversely he's Sunni, the other faction is going to believe he is a false messiah. And you could see how this could result in a massive conflict between these two factions of Islam. No one wants the other faction to have the true Mahdi. Does the Bible have anything to say about this conflict? I think it does. And this is a huge takeaway from this black flag that was flown this week. In Daniel 8, we learn about a conflict between the ram and the goat. We're told the ram is based out of an area that is modern Iran and has two horns or two kings, two sources of power. Here is what Daniel 8.3 says about it. Now the two horns were long, but one was longer than the other, with the longer one coming up last. Iran currently has one supreme leader, the Ayatollah. So this verse is telling us another leader will emerge in Iran in the end times, one who's going to be more powerful eventually than the Ayatollah. Well, who could that be? There are a couple theories. One is that it's the Kurds, who are the tribes north of Iran, south and east of Turkey. They don't have their own country and exist in parts of Turkey, Iran, Iraq, Syria. To this channel... This interpretation is unlikely, as Iran has persecuted the Kurds for generations. It's doubtful they'll ever be allies. And the Kurds are significantly weaker. Remember, the second horn that comes up later is stronger. So it's unlikely the Kurds will control Iran. Other Christian scholars say the second horn might be a general. This is possible, but the Ayatollah represents the religion of Iran. And it's very doubtful that the military are going to supersede the religion in the future. What Iran is fighting, after all, is a religious war. That's why they put up this black flag. A third theory, the one that I prefer, is that the second horn will be the 12th Imam. If he was revealed, he would instantly be considered the leader ahead of the Ayatollah. He would instantly be the leader of all Shia Islam, you must remember the 12th Imam or Mahdi is their Messiah. They feel about him somewhat 
the way a Christian would feel about Jesus. Imagine how you would feel when Jesus returns and how it would feel to stand alongside him at Armageddon. I mean, that's something every Christian would long to do. Well, the Muslims feel the same way about their Messiah. But also imagine how it would feel if, let's say, for example, the Jehovah's Witnesses reveal a false Jesus and say he's the real one and has returned. Every Christian would be completely offended by this false Christ. That is exactly how the Sunnis would feel if the Shia reveal the 12th Amman. Every Sunni on the planet would want to prove the Shia Messiah to be false. Does the Bible say anything about this? I think it does. First, it shows Iran acquiring proxies like Gaza, Lebanon, Yemen. I saw the ram budding westward. That would be Gaza and Lebanon, northward, Iraq, and southward, Yemen. Daniel 8.4 So Iran's proxy network fits into what the Bible says exactly. And notice, it doesn't use a warlike term for how Iran acquired these proxies. It says it headbutted its way to get them. In other words, it butted in to the private countries that are on the outskirts of Israel, and it butted into their affairs and took over these countries. And it also speaks of what the Sunni world's reaction might be should that happen. While I was observing, behold, a male goat was coming from the west over the surface of the whole earth without touching the ground. And the goat had a conspicuous horn between its eyes. He came up to the ram that had the two horns, which I had seen standing in front of a canal, and rushed at him in his mighty wrath. I saw him come beside the ram, and he was enraged at him. Daniel 8, 5-7. We're told later in the chapter that the goat is the king of Yavon, an empire centered where Istanbul is on the Basra Straits between Turkey and Greece. Istanbul is the city nearly all Sunni Islamic scholars say should be the capital of a future Sunni caliphate or empire. Does this goat represent a Sunni empire that's going to charge at the ram who is Shia? Well, maybe. Maybe the coming of this 12th Imam is enough to get all the Sunni nations to come together to oppose the 12th Imam. But one thing we know for sure is the goat is really angry at the ram. It said he rushed at him in mighty wrath and was enraged at him. These are very powerful words. Now, right now, the Sunni and Shia seem to have a common opponent, Israel and the USA. But in this passage, the Sunni is angry at the Shia. Enraged, actually. I've pondered this passage for years. Why are the Sunnis so enraged that they ignore their Western enemies to come at the Shia. Every Bible prophecy student should ask themselves this same question. Why is this happening? Now, is it an invasion? Well, perhaps some have considered that. Or is it the revealing of this 12th Imam, who the Sunnis feel is a false messiah? To me, I think that's more likely. Again, imagine the rage to expose someone as a false messiah, especially someone from the point of view that you don't accept, the part of your religion that you think is an error. So when I see these black flags, these black Mahdi flags, to me, it's a sign that this future conflict might be on the horizon, the one the Bible references as a stepping stone to the revealing of the Antichrist. In other words, this struggle between Sunni and Shia has to come, according to the Bible, before the Antichrist. A few verses later, it says, Out of one of them came forth a little horn, which grew exceedingly great toward the south, toward the east, and toward the beautiful land. Daniel 8, 9. So, this conflict between Sunni and Shia has to come, in our opinion, before the Antichrist. And this should give us all a sense of where the current conflict in the Middle East is going. Since Israel is invaded by the Antichrist at the midpoint of a tribulation, and since the Antichrist doesn't arise until after this Sunni-Shia struggle in Daniel 8, Israel should not lose this current war 
if our analysis is correct. And if Israel doesn't lose, in fact, maybe they win, where does that leave Iran? Kind of desperate, maybe. Willing to gamble. Gamble on claiming a man who's doing miracles in their nation is the 12th Imam. Now, this is speculation, of course. Total speculation. But it's speculation based on scripture. We're putting this video out because we suspect it is only a matter of time when videos like this will be censored and we really want our community to see this because it's one of the most important preliminary steps to the Antichrist. There are actually 12 of these steps if you didn't know that. Click right here to keep watching and discover what the other 11 steps are because most Christians don't know them. Till then, this is Nelson and I'll see you there.